Hi, this is pre-algebra lesson 3-6, Applying Proportional Reasoning to Solve Problems. In this lesson, we'll determine whether a relationship is proportional and use representations to solve problems. Let's look at solve and discuss it. Sander and Pedro are at an ice cream social. So in other words, they're hanging out um, by getting ice cream together. For every scoop of ice cream, Sander uses one over eight cup of fruit topping. Pedro uses one more tablespoon of fruit topping than the number of scoops. If Sander and Pedro each use the same amount of fruit topping, how many scoops of ice cream does each use? Okay, so um, first, you're gonna look for relationships. There are two tablespoons and one over eighth cup, one eighth cup. So uh, we can say one over eighth cup is going to be two tablespoons. Okay, so we can use two tablespoons instead of one eighth cup in order to know and compare the numbers together in the same measurements, right? Cup and tablespoons are different units, different um, measurements. So we want to convert one to another so that we can compare them better. Now let's make a chart for both Sander and Pedro. So Sander will have um, number of ice cream versus fruit topping. So let's do number of ice cream number of scoops of ice cream and fruit topping in tablespoons, okay? So if Sander uses two tablespoons of fruit topping for every scoop of ice cream, it means you have one scoop of ice cream, she, he uses two tablespoons, okay? Another scoop, he'll use four tablespoons. Another scoop, he will use six tablespoons and so on, okay? That is Sanders table, okay? Let's do two more, four, eight, five, 10, and so on. Okay, what about Pedro's? For Pedro, the number of scoops of ice creams versus fruit topping in tablespoons, what is his rate? Peter uses one more tablespoon of fruit topping than the number of scoops. So if he has one scoop of ice cream, he uses one more tablespoon of fruit topping than this number, which is two tablespoons for this one. What about two scoops? He's gonna use one more tablespoon than the number of two, right? So that's three tablespoons um, of topping. Three scoops, four, four scoops, five, five scoops, six, and so on. Six, seven, seven, eight. You see the idea, right? Ta the number of tablespoon for fruit topping is always gonna be one greater than the number of scoops, right? So do we have um, so if Sander and Peter each uses the same amount of fruit topping, so we're looking at the same numbers in fruit topping, tablespoons, how many scoops of ice cream does each use? What are some numbers that we see that are the same for the table top, the fruit topping, tablespoon? We have twos and then fours and then eights so far in our tables. So there could be multiple solutions. They might have um, just one, um, one scoops of ice cream, uh, Sander and Pedro, um, or 
Xander might have two scoops of ice cream. Pedro might have three scoops of ice cream in order to get the same fruit topping, four, four tablespoons of fruit topping. Or Xander may have four scoops of ice cream. Pedro may have seven scoops of ice cream for eight tablespoons of fruit topping and so on. Does that make sense? So what, how can we describe the relationship for both? We can say that Sander doubles the number of scoops for the number of tablespoon of topping. So the relationship is, is it proportional or not proportional? It's proportional. What about Pedro? Pedro uses different ratios of tablespoon to scoops. All the ratios are different, seven to six eight to seven, right? It's gonna be always one greater than the number of scoops, but the ratios, you need to divide Y over X, right? The ratios are always gonna be different. Um, so the relationship is not proportional. Okay. They can use two tablespoons of topping for one scoop of ice cream. So give an example. They may use two tablespoons of topping for one scoop of ice cream. For which person, Sander or Pedro, is the relationship between the quantities of ice cream and fruit topping proportional? Is there any, anybody who has a proportional relationship? Yeah, we just talked about it, right? Sander will have a proportional relationship, right? Sander, because what is the constant of, uh, what is the what is the ratio? What is the constant of change? Proportionality. Double. So it's going to be two, right? The constant multiple eight relates the number of scoops of ice cream and the number of cups of fruit topping, right? If you look at yeah, constant multiple of wait the the constant multiple of two actually two, four, six, eight, ten, and so on. So the ratio is two over one, four over two. So that's gonna be two, uh, two. The constant of proportionality is two. Okay. So throughout this lesson, let's think about how can proportional reasoning help solve a problem? Let's look at example one. Use proportional reasoning to solve a problem. The ratio of collectible cards D. Sean owns to cards that Stephanie owns is five to two. That is a ratio. Stephanie has 36 cards. How will the ratio of D. Sean's cards to Stephanie's cards change if they both sell half their cards? Okay, so right now, the ratio would, uh, the ratio from Dishan's to Stephanie is five to two. Okay, and Stephanie right now has 36. So what's Dishan's cards, what's the number of Dishan's cards right now? In order to, uh, in order to have two become 36, what do you multiply? 
18. So you multiply 18 for five as well, and you should get 90 cards. So Dijon's cards are 90 right now. But how, how does it change if both sell half their cards? So if you divide both of them by two, Dishan will have 45 left. Stephanie would have 18 left. Right? So 45 over 18 is still five over two. Right? The number, if the number of cards change by the same multiple. <laughs> So your answer is that if the number of cards changed by the same multiple, the ratio would not change, right? If, you, if it changes by the same multiple, of course it's gonna be equivalent ratio. So it's not gonna change. Let's look at try it. After selling half of their card collections, Dijon and Stephanie each buy nine new cards. Okay, so after, after selling half, um, they each buy nine, so plus nine for both. And then what's the ratio of the number of cards Dishan has to the number Stephanie has? So you plus nine on both numbers and you get 54 over, 27. Is this ratio the same? No. 54 over 27 is 2 over 1, right? 27 times 2 is 54. So 45 over 18 would be 5 or 2. So the ratios change, okay? Why did the ratio stay the same in example one, but change in the try it? Okay, in the example, you multiply it, right? In the... In the example, we multiply the same number. But and try it, we add it the same number. Ratios stay the same when we multiply the same number, not when we add. Okay. Example two, recognize when to use proportional reasoning. Martin is six years old when his sister Cassandra is three years old. How old will Martin be when Cassandra is six years old? They age together. Everybody age together. We, we live in a, uh, the same time, uh, time frame, right? So then uh, if Martin's age uh, increased by, by one, Cassandra's age increased by one as well. So they'll always, be three years apart, right? So you can make a table to represent their ages and the change of their ages, right? So look for a constant multiple to, to determine whether you can use proportional reasoning to solve this problem. Do we have a constant multiple? If you multiply six times 1.5, you get nine. If you multiply three times two, you get six. Do we have the same number of multi that's multiplied? Do we have a constant multiple? No, there is no constant multiple. So you cannot use proportional reasoning. In three years, when Cassandra is six years old, Martin will also be three years older or nine years old. So in this problem, no, they're not proportional relationship, so we cannot use proportional reasoning. So mark, note the constant multiple, okay? They need to be the same. Example three, applying proportional reasoning. A video streaming service charged Brian 
four for a full year of access. Brian thinks he was not charged the, co the correct amount. What should Brian say when he calls customer service? Okay, so video streaming is advertised only 8.99 a month. Okay, full year has how many months? 12 months. So what's 8.99 times 12? 107.88. And why is he charged 143.84? He doesn't know. So when he calls customer service, he's gonna say, oh, it's, adver it's advertised $8.99 a month, but, uh, and so that should cost 107.88 a year, but I was charged 143.84, why, right? Or option two, you can make an equation, y equals 8.998, and you can divide both sides by 8.99 and see what x has to equal to. And that's your constant multiple 16. Brian was charged for 16 months, not 12 months, right? So he should ask customer service to give him four months of free online service. But, or he could ask for a refund of $35.96. Let's look at try a question. A florist makes, makes bouquet that includes 50 white flowers and seven red flowers. If the florist orders, 1,050 white flowers and 140 red flowers, there will be leftover flowers. How can the florist adjust the order so there are no leftover flowers? Okay, you're gonna use the ratios 50 over seven and 1,050 over 140. Are they equivalent ratios? Simplify the fraction, 50 over seven is already simplified. That could be 105 over 14. Can you divide 105 by two? No, so that's already simplified. It's 50 over seven, same as 105. No, if you wanna make sure, multiply seven by two, 150 by two, and then you get 100 over 14. 100 over 14 is not equivalent to 105 over 14. They are not equivalent fractions. So the florist can change the number of white flowers to 1,000 to make 20 bouquets, right? Instead of 1,050. All right, no leftover flowers. You need to make the ratios the same. So you can say the florist can change the number of white flowers to thousand to make 20 bouquets, okay? Key concept, let's summarize our lesson. So, um, Think about how two quantities are related before you decide to use proportion reasoning to solve a problem. Because if they're not related proportionally, you might not want to use proportional reasoning, okay? So it's important to identify if the relationship is proportional or not before you actually start using proportional re reasoning. Um, for example, when Evie is two years old, Josh is six years old, Josh is four years older than Evie, Josh is three times as old as Evie, in two years, uh, Evie is four years old, Josh is eight years old, you're adding two for both uh, numbers, right? Adding the same number does not give you the same ratio. Josh is still four years older than Evie, but he's now two times, twice as old as Evie. So three times and two times are not the same uh, constant multiple, right? So if you don't have constant multiple, that means you cannot use proportional reasoning to solve problem, okay? Because they're, they're, they're just not related proportionally. All right, that was our last lesson of the topic, applying proportional reasoning to solve problems. Bye guys, end of topic three.